Welcome to Grace Digital Presentation. We shall be discussing the topic, Recharge the Right Way. We've all been there. That bone-tired point in our lives where something on the inside of our heart screams, I'm tired, I need a break, and I can't take this anymore. Lamentations 5, 5 and 6. Those who pursue us are at our heels. We are weary and find no rest. We submitted to Egypt and Assyria to get enough bread. A lot of times it is regarding our goals and careers, while at other times it is because of our relationships, raising a family, or just a tiredness that comes from keeping up appearances and acting like all is well, when in reality we just want to lie down, so as to take a long rest from the waves that keep crashing over us. However, it is comforting to know that God cares about our well-being, whether we feel excited or weary. Psalm 68, 8 through 10. The earth shook, the heavens poured down rain, before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. You gave abundant showers, O God. You refreshed your weary inheritance. Your people settled in it, and from your bounty, God, you provided for the poor. It is refreshing to know that he has the right word for us in moments like this. He knows the right word to pick us up and put us back in the right frame of mind again. Psalm 119, 25 through 30. I am laid low in the dust. Preserve my life according to your word. I gave an account of my ways and you answered me. Teach me your decrees. Cause me to understand the way of your precepts that I may meditate on your wonderful deeds. My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Keep me from deceitful ways. Be gracious to me and teach me your law. The right word to sustain the weary should come straight from God's heart. Isaiah 50, 4. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. Therefore, the first step to get back on your feet and feel reinvigorated is to come to Him. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and His understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Oftentimes we think of getting back on track and getting rest for our weary souls. We usually think of watching a movie, hanging out with friends and going for a vacation somewhere quiet. While these aren't wrong, they can leave us feeling more spent after a while. It is only when we commit to a time of fellowship with the one who we're made from in the first place that life begins to feel like an adventure again and we receive the zeal to move once again. God alone is the source of all life, whether physical, spiritual, or emotional. Though the devil has abused so much of the energy that gets into us to make us bone tired, Jehovah is the only one who can pour into us the positive and needed strength to face each day with zest again, for our existence is incomplete, vain, and futile without Him. Acts 17, 27 through 29. God did this so that they would seek Him and perhaps reach out for Him and find Him, though He is not far away from any one of us. For in Him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are His offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. When we choose to ignore God, who is the genuine well of life, we end up feeling more drained instead of being renewed by those things or experiences that we keep seeking. Isaiah 28, 12. To whom he said, This is the resting place. Let the weary rest. And this is the place of repose, but they would not listen. But what a supernatural joy fills us from within when we hearken to his words, correction, instruction, or affirmations. Then we can recharge and move forward from there. 
Jeremiah 31, 23 through 26. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. When I bring them back from captivity, the people in the land of Judah and in its towns will once again use these words. The Lord bless you, you prosperous city, you sacred mountain. People will live together in Judah and all its towns, farmers and those who move about with their flocks. I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. At this I awoke and looked around. My sleep had been pleasant to me. Interestingly, that fatigue on the inside that demands a recharge doesn't necessarily come when we have had a series of failures, like most people would probably, but can also come when we have had a series of great successes only to experience one letdown. Elijah knew how it felt to be pumped and excited one day because of great success, only to start running on empty the very next day. 1 Kings 18, 21-39 Elijah went up before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left. But Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets choose one for themselves, and let them cut it into pieces, and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire, he is the God. Then all the people said, What you say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one of the bulls and prepare it first, since there are so many of you. Call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull given them and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response, no one answered. And they danced around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a god. Perhaps he is deep in thought, or busy, or traveling. Perhaps he is sleeping and must be awakened. So they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. Midday passed and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time of the evening sacrifice. But there was no response, no one answered, no one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come here to me. They came to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. Elijah took twelve stones, one for each of the tribes descended from Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Your name shall be Israel. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he dug a trench around it, large enough to hold two seas of seed. He arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces, and laid it on the wood. Then he said to them, Fill four large jars with water, and pour it on the offering and on the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered, and they did it the third time. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. At the same time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil and also licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. So here was a man that was on top of the world. He had become really famous and had just been proven as a genuine servant of the Most High God. But when he heard that the queen wanted revenge, his heart failed him and he became so weary about his life's assignment as a prophet of God. 1 Kings chapter 19 Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, 
while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, I am no better than my ancestors. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. However, God knew the exact way to recharge him, and that was to send him the right word when he was alone and fellowshipping with him. 1 Kings 19, 12-18 After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael king over Aram. Also, anoint Jehu son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Maloah to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hahazel, and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve seven thousand in Israel all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. With these words of direction and instructions, Elijah rose up, no more weary, tired and depressed, but full of vision and passion for the future. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for every provisions that you have made for me to be renewed, revived, and refreshed whenever I make time to listen to your voice. Thank you for teaching me that it is in you that my inner strength is recharged and not in other created things. In the name of Jesus, I choose to shut out the noise in the world, while paying serious attention to intimacy with you, no matter how weary I feel, so that I can receive your love-filled voice for strength at all times. Amen.